our fourth objective, which is describing the apical, lateral, and basal surfaces of the epithelia and the cells. Okay, so talking about the unique features of each of these surfaces, we'll start by looking at the lateral surface features. At the lateral domain or at the lateral surface of the cells, we typically have what we call cell junctions. And these are components or structures that help to link one cell to the other. There are four types of cell junctions that we're gonna talk about, and they all have a different structure. They're located in different parts of the lateral domain, and they have a different function. So the adhesion proteins basically link plasma membranes to adjacent cells. There are small little proteins that are sticking out of the side of each of the cell, and they help to link the plasma membrane of one cell to the plasma membrane of another cell. And I want you to bear in mind what the structure of the plasma membrane looks like, right? That's our phospholipid bilayer. So we have some proteins that are sticking out of the phospholipid bilayer. We talked about these proteins. They are connecting or holding hands to proteins that are sticking out the plasma membrane of the adjacent cell. And as such, they're really linking one cell to the other, to the other, to the other. And these are our adhesion proteins. The second factor that helps to keep two cells together are the contours of the adjacent cell membrane. Now, when I say contours, this means that one cell sort of sits very nicely in the grooves or the, the, the contours of the adjacent cell. So there's like, a, there's like a, a twist or a contour or a wind in that cell membrane. And that allows two adjacent cells to sit next to each other, similar to the way that two pieces of a puzzle sit next to each other. All right, the grooves in those two cells fit very nicely with each other in that puzzle, that pieces of a puzzle um, would, okay? Next, we talk about the specialized cell junction. So there are four types of special cell junctions. Tight junctions, also called zona occludens. These help to close off the intercellular spaces. When I say close off intercellular spaces, this means that the spaces between one cell and another that would typically allow the movement of substances from the lumen down into the basement membrane, you want to close those off so that there is no movement of substances in between the cells. You want all the movement to take place through the cell itself, okay? Adhesive belt junctions, also called zona adherens. These are anchoring junctions, right? We have certain proteins that are sticking out of the cell and they're basically connected to the cytoskeletal, cytoskeletal elements that are in the cell. All right, so these filaments that are all around the cell connect to those proteins. Okay, let's move to this image. All right, so we can see that these cytoskeletal filaments, which are shown here like these little fibers in the cell, connect to these adhesive proteins. All right, so you can see these adhesive proteins, and then they're sticking out the lateral domains of each cell, and they're gripping the lateral domains of the adjacent cell. So basically we have this belt that is running around the lateral surface of the cell and anchoring one cell to the next, to the next, to the next. Desmosomes are the next type of adhe uh, um, adhe adhesive junctions. And their main function as well is again, binding cells together. Desmosomes are more effective at binding cells together. That's their main job. All right. Now, desmosomes are a little different from the adhesive belt. They're found lower than the adhesive belt in terms of their location on the lateral surface. And there are pores that are in the membrane of one cell that are connected to proteins that are connected to the adjacent cell. All right. So I'll say that in another way. We have certain <coughs> pores. Right? So these are pores in the wall of this cell that have proteins sticking out into the middle, connected to pores on the adjacent cell. This adjacent cell also has proteins sticking out into the middle. And so each of these proteins sort of zip up the side of the cell where you have protein from one cell, protein from another cell, protein from one cell, protein from another cell, and they zip up the sides of the cell, anchoring both cells together. This is very, very important in maintaining the integrity of this tissue. 
all right? One cell cannot just move off, up or down, and this prevents tearing or injury to this uh, epithelial tissue. The final junction at the bottom are your gap junctions. We talked about gap junctions before. These are basically channels or pores that go from one cell to the other and help the cells to uh, synchronize their information by allowing them to transport or communicate between each other. All right, so those are the features of the lateral surface of the cell. And let's talk about the basal surface features. Now the basal surface of the cell is typically the boundary between the underlying connective tissue and the epithelial cells. Now non-cellular supporting sheets are the extracellular material that helps to anchor this tissue to the underlying connective tissue. Okay. This consists of proteins that are secreted by the cell that help to do this, help to anchor the tissue down. This is also important in protecting the tissue from injury. So they function as a selective barrier that is protecting certain elements from the underlying uh, blood vessels and so on from getting um, from moving from the capillaries into the epithelia. So only things that the epithelial cells need will be transported into the cell and other things will be left out. That's a selective barrier. The second job of the basal surface is to provide scaffolding. So scaffolding is that area underneath the cell that pretty much helps to anchor it, provide structure, as well as the basis for regenerating new cells. We mentioned earlier that new cells are regenerated from the bottom upward. So there's a scaffolding area at the basement membrane, which helps to provide the basis for the regeneration and the migration of new cells. So the basal surface is pretty much made of the basal lamina and the reticular layers. These two structures together form what is called the basement membrane. All right, so the basal lamina, right, which is this thin non-cellular connective tissue here, as well as the reticular fibers. Now the reticular fibers are actually coming from the connective tissue. So we have the cellular layer, the epithelial cells, Underneath it is this non-cellular structural material called the, called the basal lamina. And then in interacting with that basal lamina are some fibers that are actually coming from the connective tissue. Now the connective tissue has all types of fibers in it. It has collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. Specifically the reticular fibers that reach up from the connective tissue interact with the basal lamina and those two structures together form the basement membrane. This helps to keep the cells anchored down onto the, uh, the connective tissue. Okay, <clears throat> let's keep moving here. Finally, the apical surface features, which are basically microvilli and <laughs> cilia. We sort of talked about these two structures before. The important thing is to differentiate them, to differentiate their function. Microvilli are more finger-like, meaning that they're the folding of the uh, apical surface. So their main job is to increase the surface area. We see them in the kidneys, we see them in the small intestines. The cilia, however, are longer structures. They're more hair-like and they're motile. Motile means that they're moving or beating like a whip. And their main job is to move substances in the lumen along. So they move mucus along. Um, the respiratory tract, they move the uh, zygote or the egg along the reproductive tract. They move mucus and debris along the uh, trachea and the respiratory tract as well. Okay, so that's cilia versus microvilla. And if you look at this image, oops, this image, we can see that cilia are, cilia are longer, whereas microvilli are shorter. So cilia uh, or the finger-like projections, whereas microvilli are the hair-like projections. And then cilia are moving or motile, whereas microvilli are not. Cilia are found in the reproductive tract and the respiratory tract. Microvilli are found in the kidneys and the gastrointestinal tract, so the intestines.